everybody. We're back with Billy Crystal. You, you're, you're starring in the film uh, Standing Up, Falling Down. And uh, who do you play? We have a clip here with you and and what, what's the what's the young actor playing the lead? Oh, he's great. His name is Ben Schwartz. He's ben a Schwartz. wonderful actor. Yeah, it's you and Ben. And it's you and Ben Schwartz in a church. What's happening here? We're going to a funeral for we. I am his uh, his dermatologist. I'm a hard drinking, pot smoking dermatologist, which was hard for me because I'm not a dermatologist. And they meet at this funeral. Um, they go for different reasons. Ben's character, Scott, goes to thinking his ex-girlfriend will be there, and I go thinking that my son, who I'm estranged from, will be there, and we see each other in the in the back of the church. Jim? Psst. Hey, Rollins, right? It's Rollins. Hey, how you doing? Are you everywhere? I get around. What are you doing here? Honestly, I don't even know. Wow. What? You killed Rory. I didn't kill Rory. That's why you were stressed. What are you doing? That's your hand on his shoulder right before you strangled him. Rory died of leukemia. No, he died of leukemia. Are you high? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> now, you know me. You know I keep my finger on the pulse of the Oscar buzz out there. And this thing, this Oscar buzz is humming like a refrigerator coil around you. Uh -huh. What, what, who was your acting hero growing up? Was it somebody you wanted to model yourself after? Uh, there was a lot, but uh, Jack Lemmon. Um, of course, the apartment, the greatest of know. all time. Yeah, because what, what I loved about, about Mr. Lemmon was he could be outrageously funny. Mr. Roberts, some like it hot. Then he could break your heart. The Apartment, Days of Wine and Roses, uh, Save the Tiger. And and from when I got this script, and it's just a very small, small movie. My name is Marty. I didn't even have a last name. That's how small the budget was. And it was a, to me, it was a Jack Lemon kind of part. And there was a, another great actor who I just really loved. His name was Mickey Rooney. And Mickey Rooney... Of course, Mickey Rooney uh, was. What people forget about Mickey Rooney, he was at one time the, 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 the biggest... Box office star in the world. I think seven years in a row, he was number one in a box of the Andy Hardy movies. He could do everything. He could sing, he could dance, he could play instruments. He was, he was amazing talent. And as he got older, the parts got more interesting for him. Um, and so a movie I loved was The Black Stallion. Incredible. And Throwing yeah, it he, away. Throwing it away. Yeah. Exactly. Threw it away. Threw it away. He plays an aging jockey. And I got to interview him in an evening at the Academy um, where they were celebrating the 50th anniversary of It's a Mad, 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 Mad World. And on stage was um, greats, uh, Carl Reiner, Jonathan Winters, and, and Mickey, and other people from the movie. And, and I introduced him. And, and honestly, he was in a wheelchair. And he he's, you know, was five foot one, five, two, he, I introduced him, he rolled out, then got out of the chair and did an amazing time step and then sat back down. And then afterwards we were talking and I told him how much I loved uh, the Black Stallion. And he said, yeah, I waited a long time for that. And he said to me, you wait around, those parts come to you, you know, so wait, you're going to find an aging jockey role. It'll happen. It'll happen. So this guy, Marty, it was not a jockey, but it was a role that it, at my age now, was a, it was a blessing to get a part that I could just be and, and, and not, you know, not really have to do too much. I just love this guy. So um, that was really good advice because I think the longer, you know, you're, you're around, the more it informs your work. And then it, it, I don't know, I just felt really at ease playing this guy. I, I gotta ask it's you. Nice, about, it's nice after all these years to just feel like, hey, I'm getting it. I'm getting. I'm getting it. Yeah. yeah. You're gonna. You're gonna. You're gonna. You're gonna make it someday. I have faith <laughs> in you. But I gotta ask you about Carl Reiner. Of of yeah. all of all that uh, generation. I mean, the, of of comedians or comic writers or comic producers. He to me was. Um, I don't wanna say the most admirable. He's the one I I loved the most. And unfortunately, yeah. I never got a chance to meet him. I've met I've met Mel. Uh, I've met Mel, but I, I never got to meet Carl. And um, how that man died without a Kennedy Center honor, I don't know. 
But uh, what did he mean to you? Because he was the great. He was. He was. Um, if there was a career to aspire to for me, it was his, because he did so many things. He was a great sketch player. He was a wonderful writer. Right up until the day he passed away, he was still writing. He produced, created the Dick Van Dyke Show, was hilarious in it. And when I first saw him, I was f five or six years old, and he made me laugh with Sid on that amazing show of shows and in later Caesar's Hour. And then when he was 98 and I was with him on his birthday, he made me laugh. And in between all that time... He made everybody laugh, and and he was an uncle to me, um, and and Mel has been the same way. That's one of the great blessings. Rob is my dearest friend, and and then Carl and I had a whole separate wonderful relationship where we would speak and talk, and and and, and he was just a giant. I mean, really a giant. And my favorite photograph of of us together. Um, I mean, show of shows really made me want to be funny. I mean, there was nobody funnier on screen than Sid. And look who wrote that show. That humor was in there. Mel and, and Neil Simon and later Woody Allen and Larry Gelbart. And so this is a picture backstage at the very first comic relief mm -hmm. that I did with Robin and Whoopi and, and, and all of our fellow comedians. Yeah. And we, we honored the show of shows. Oh, good, good I got there. it. We see it. There's yeah. Imogene. There's Imogene Coca, Howard Mars, Sid, me hugging Sid's leg, and there's Carl. <laughs> and the, re the reason I'm hug hugging Sid's leg was they did a routine that you may remember, a sketch on This Is Your Life. The television that Ralph Ed was This Is Your Life. Mm -hmm. and, and Sid played a guy who didn't want his life to be told. So he was in a miserable mood, and they bring out Howard Mars, who plays Uncle Goopy. And Uncle Gooby just cries. He just doesn't, he can't stop crying. And every time he sees Sid, he cries. And he jumps on him. And Sid was so strong. And he would carry him around the set. And then he was on Sid's leg. And Sid drags him around the set. So I was four or five. So when, you know, it was my bedtime and my dad would come in from work, I'd grab on his leg and he'd drag me around the house and then put me into bed. So when I saw them and, and met them all for the first time, I just, I just grabbed Sid's leg like that. And he was, you know, it was a chance to be Uncle Goopy. They meant everything to me. And Sid, um, Sid was a giant. I got to talk with him several times. And when he came to see me in my show, Seven Hundred Sundays, it was like, it was the greatest, like, reversal. I mean, he was there watching me. And, and, and I was on stage, you know, because, really, because of, of him. It was, a, and, and the same with Carl. It was... Um, I was very blessed. I was at Carl's birthday, um, the last one he could have because of the pandemic. It was 98. And he blows out his candles and he makes a wish. And, and said, Rob said, what'd you wish for, Pop? And he went, all right, Trump, you're out of here. And that was, it was so, you know, just amazing. It was just been very blessed to, um, to have known him. Well, Billy, thanks so much for being here. I mean, it's always good to have you on. It's like a vacation. Because uh, you're, you're, you're the best kind of guest. You, you got a lot to say, and we love hearing you say it. And I hope you know that, that, that what those people like Carl and, and Mel mean to you, you mean to an entire generation of oh. comedians like me. And uh, I wish I could be there to grab your leg. <laughs> Standing Up, Falling Down is available on demand now. Billy Crystal, everybody. We'll be right back with Congresswoman Jackie Spear.